Welcome to Defense Talks Matters. Today's update is coming from Turkey, and this time it is not just another drone test or routine exercise. Today, military aviation history has officially entered a new phase. For the first time ever, an unmanned fighter aircraft has successfully locked, tracked, and destroyed a target using a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile with its own onboard radar. The aircraft is Kizilelma, Turkey's unmanned fighter jet. During this test, Kizilelma used its onboard AESA radar to detect the target, locked it independently, and then fired a BVR air-to-air -air missile from its own pylon. The missile intercepted the target with complete accuracy. No human pilot was involved in target tracking, radar operation, or weapons release. Everything was autonomous. This single test has changed the future of aerial warfare. For decades, the idea of an unmanned aircraft performing air-to-air -air combat at BVR range existed only in simulations. Now, it has become a battlefield reality. This means a fighter no longer needs a human pilot to detect, track, and destroy an enemy aircraft from long range. Human life is removed from direct risk at the very front of the battle space. This is not just a technological success. This is a strategic shift. Now, why does this matter so much for Pakistan? Because Pakistan was among the very first air forces that openly supported the Kizilelma program during its early development phase. From the beginning, Pakistan showed interest in how this platform could be used for future man-unmanned teaming operations. And today, the exact concept Pakistan has been studying has taken a massive leap forward. Kizilelma is not a basic drone. It is designed as an unmanned fighter with stealth shaping, internal weapons carriage, high-speed performance, and advanced sensors. It is built to fly alongside manned fighter jets, not just for surveillance, but for actual combat missions. This means future air warfare will not be fought by pilots alone anymore. It will be fought by pilot drone teams. Now imagine this concept in Pakistan's combat environment. Pakistan has one of the largest fleets of JF-17 fighters in the world. Block 3 already carries an AESA radar, long-range BVR missiles, and advanced electronic warfare systems. Pakistan also operates F-16 seconds in newer 4.5 generation platforms. If Kizilelma is integrated into this ecosystem, Pakistan gains a completely new layer of air combat capability. In future conflicts, Unmanned fighters like Kizilelma can fly in front of manned fighters, enter heavily defended enemy airspace, force enemy radars to activate, absorb interception attempts, and even shoot down enemy aircraft before manned jets are even detected. This shifts the risk from pilots to machines. And this is exactly where next generation air forces are heading. Another critical point, Kizilelma is a stealth-oriented platform. That means in a contested environment where enemy air defenses are active, Kizilelma can operate far deeper than conventional fighters. This directly complements the future induction of stealth platforms in the region. From Pakistan's perspective, this unmanned fighter fits perfectly into future operational planning because Pakistan's doctrine is not about brute force numbers. It is about smart integration of technology, efficient force multipliers, and layered deterrence. Kizilelma becomes a force multiplier. Now let's look across the border. India is also attempting to move into man-on-man teaming through its CATS Warrior program, but that program is still in early developmental stages. It has not demonstrated autonomous BVR combat. It has not achieved independent radar-guided interception. It is still several years behind in practical deployment. Meanwhile, Kizilelma has already completed an autonomous BVR kill. This creates a visible capability gap. Another very important factor is adaptability. Pakistan's JF-17 program gives Pakistan complete access to its aircraft's source code. This means Pakistan can deeply integrate unmanned platforms into its combat network without external restrictions. Data sharing, sensor fusion, targeting delegation, and coordinated missile launches can all be locally customized. That freedom does not exist in Western ecosystems. This means Pakistan can build a truly sovereign man-unmanned combat architecture. Now let's address the air combat reality this introduces. In traditional dogfights, pilots operate under high G-forces 
limited situational awareness, and severe reaction time pressure. An unmanned fighter does not suffer from fatigue, blackout, spatial disorientation, or delayed response. It operates on sensor data and algorithms at machine speed. This provides two massive advantages. First, reaction time becomes almost instantaneous. Second, engagement decisions are based on full battle space data, not pilot eyesight alone. This is deadly in modern air warfare. The unmanned fighter does not replace manned fighters. It enhances them. The unmanned aircraft becomes the frontline interceptor, while manned fighters act as command and control nodes. This is exactly how future air battles will be fought. Now, let's connect this to regional balance. Pakistan is moving toward a new layered air power structure. Fourth generation fighters, 4.5 generation fighters, stealth platforms, and now unmanned fighters that can fight at BVR ranges. On the other side, India is still stuck between delayed indigenous development and restricted foreign acquisitions. Until recently, India relied heavily on numerical strength. But numerical strength becomes less relevant when a technologically networked force faces it. One unmanned stealth fighter operating at BVR can neutralize multiple conventional fighters without ever being visually detected. That is the new reality. Another strategic angle is cost. Unmanned fighters are significantly cheaper to operate than piloted fifth generation aircraft. That means air forces can deploy larger numbers without risking experienced pilots. This favors countries that focus on efficient warfare rather than prestige platforms. From Pakistan's side, pursuing unmanned combat aircraft like Kizil Elma is not just smart, it is necessary. Because air dominance in the next decade will depend more on sensor fusion, autonomous decision-making, and networked weapons than on raw speed or maneuverability. This test tells us one thing very clearly. Unmanned air-to-air -air combat is no longer theoretical. It is operational. Now, a very important suggestion. Pakistan should not remain only an observer in this shift. It should actively pursue joint trials, weapon integration, source code collaboration, local manufacturing, and full man-unmanned combat doctrine development. Because waiting three or four more years will mean falling behind in a domain that is advancing extremely fast. If Pakistan integrates unmanned fighters early, it will dominate the learning curve. And in modern warfare, the learning curve decides outcomes even before wars begin. To conclude, today's test is not just a technological milestone for Turkey. It is a warning sign for everyone still thinking in old air combat terms. The future fighter is not always manned. The future interceptor does not always carry a pilot. And the future battles will be decided by networks, algorithms, and machine speed decisions. Pakistan has the opportunity to be on the winning side of this transformation. And how soon that opportunity is acted upon will decide the balance of air power in South Asia for the next two decades. Please subscribe to our channel for more updates. See you guys in the next video.